In this episode, we will go beyond budgets and financial governance. We will talk about how organization can become more human and adaptive. Welcome to episode 20 of the Leading Complexity podcast. This is where we explore the art of leading organizations in today's complex and hyper-competitive landscape. We do this together with some of the world's foremost thinkers in leadership. My name is Thomas Björkholm and with me I have Mikael Göte. In this episode we will listen to an exciting conversation we had with Bjarte Boksnäs. Yes, and Bjarte, he is a former CFO of Equinor, which is formerly known as Statoil. Uh, that's where he developed the concept of beyond budgeting. He has written the books Implementing Beyond Budgeting and Unlocking the Performance Potential. And recently also This is Beyond Budgeting, a guide to more adaptive and human organizations. And we are happy that he's also a long-time friend of CRISP. Let's look at the interview. Hello, Berthe. Uh, we're so happy to have you in our Leading Complexity program. Uh, for those who haven't met you or don't know who you are, just can, can you just briefly say uh, what's your background? Well, I'm a finance guy by education, um, but one that also has have worked in human resources uh, for a period. And uh, I work with Beyond Budgeting, which I have done through uh, various corporate roles for, uh, for uh, my entire career. Um, uh, I was responsible for the implementation at uh, Equinor, earlier called Statoil, which is one of Scandinavia's largest uh, companies. Um, and last year I took a difficult decision. I decided to leave corporate life and start uh, Boxness Advisory to be able to work full time on beyond budgeting because the interest out there is simply massive. Yes, I've known you in the beyond budgeting space for a long time and now you can focus completely on it then. Yes. So, so why should leaders care about complexity? Well, that is actually very simple. <laughs> uh, leaders, and we all need to take reality seriously and things have changed not just uh, in our business environments and the world around us, but also in organizations. Uh, and, and these realities, uh, externally, internally, is something that um, uh, we must take seriously. And that has implications for how uh, we must uh, lead and manage. It has implications for the design of our management models. And that is what Beyond Budgeting is about. Um, responding, addressing uh, the fact that things have changed. So, so why is this a challenge for leaders of today? Well, I think the biggest challenge uh, when it comes to beyond budgeting is not necessarily to change what we do, because there is no rocket science. Mm -hmm. The challenge is to change how we think. And uh, that includes challenging the two main assumptions behind traditional management. Uh, number one, that you can't trust people. And number two, that the future is predictable and planable. And both those beliefs is something that uh, uh, we need to let go of because it's simply not uh, true. But it can be painful for many uh, because this um, might be what they have practiced and believed in for many, many years. Uh, so that's the hard part, that's the challenge change how we think mm. so what is, if you were to summarize what is your key message to uh, leaders that are facing complexity now well again organizations they need management models that uh, can cope with uh, not just uh, the the uh, business environment uh, and the, and the complexity we find out there but also with new uh, and bigger expectations from today's employees, uh, it's more than just wanting a, a paycheck. And, and again, um, uh, beyond budgeting are just offering a management model that uh, addresses both leadership and management processes. It is about be becoming uh, more human and more adaptive as organizations. That is the key message in beyond budgeting. It is about much more than budgets 
um, that the reason for that budget component is that traditional budgeting sits at the core of traditional management. And unless you also address the budgeting mindset, the budgeting processes, you will uh, never be able to cope with uh, neither the uh, environment out there or with the expectations of uh, employees. Oh, so that's why it's called beyond budgeting, because budgeting sets the kind of foundation and limitation of, of organizations to manage complexity. Absolutely. But, you know, this is, this is business agility in, in, in practice. Um, but that, that, that label did not exist when beyond <laughs> budgeting was born in, in the late 90s. Yeah, so, so that's the title of your, of your session in the Leading Complexity Program, uh, Beyond Budgeting, Business Agility in Practice. Yes. So, so what do you hope for the participants to take uh, with them after the session? I can promise participants that they will get a deep and good understanding of what Beyond Budgeting is. So what it is, how it works, and also why it improves performance in the right way. Good, great. I'm really curious myself and can, maybe also kind of then get a glimpse to why it's so you know, in demand at the moment. So thanks so much, Berthe. You're welcome. Oh, what a great interview. I think a lot of people believe that Beyond Budgeting is just about abandoning budgeting. Yeah, that's how it started. But nowadays it encompasses much more than just... Uh, Beyond budgeting, it has a comprehensive description of business agility. Uh, it all started when Bjarte discovered the limits of traditional budgeting at Statoil. Uh, the key insight he had was that you need to separate the three common management processes of uh, setting targets, uh, working with the budget or forecasting, and the resource allocation. In most traditional companies, these, these three processes are tied together so that they're really connected. And for example, if you have a big project initiative, you have the budget, um, it's connected to the goal of the project, and also you have allocated resources to this. So this makes change very cumbersome. Uh, for imagine you come up with something new to do, you don't want to go through a, a cumbersome budgeting process. So he realized that this is not the problem of each process. It's the problem is that they are connected. So then he split those into separate processes and they had fantastic results at uh, Statoil. Okay, so this is about getting more uh, adaptability in organizations, but it's also about bringing in being more human centric. So let's explain some of the core concepts of beyond budgeting. Um, and Bjarte has divided the um, principles into leadership and management. So leadership is about on the people side and management on more on the structural organizational uh, side. So let's explore, let's start with the leadership uh, principles. Thomas, um, could you go through some of them? Yes. Uh, so as you said, it's six different principles. And uh, the first one is purpose. That is the idea of having the direction for the company and also making sure that people feel engagement and are inspired to be working in this. So it's kind of what we talked about in an earlier episode where we talked about the higher intent. Where are we moving? The second principle is values. And that's the idea of instead of commanding people, we can build an, a culture. So it's kind of culture driven. So people know what to do and, and that's also something we have talked about earlier in uh, in episodes especially if you look for the episode uh, with Erin Mayer. Transparency also a well-known theme in this podcast and um, the idea is to kind of still have control but without thinking that the only way to get control is that everything passes you uh, and this is kind of the command and control idea that if everything passes me and I tell people what to do and they are reporting back to me, I have control. But a lot of time we have seen that you actually get better control just by making sure that we have a good transparency instead. And so you can see what is happening without actually intervening. 
it's to- kind of uh, it's a kind of um, alternative to to the command and control and yes i i remember um, uh, i was working with a, a manager saying that it's impossible to have full control or have direct control unless i do the work myself yeah. so so then he, he called it uh, leading by remote control uh, i have to still a sense of control it's not letting go uh, but it's not leading direct or doing the direct work it's creating yeah this uh, collaboration trust and transparency I think that is kind of interesting uh, because if you are becoming the bottleneck, people will find ways around that. And, and suddenly you have no control because you have no transparency. They know that you are not allowed to do this, but that's the only way to get things done in a very bureaucratic organization. So in a way of having control, you're actually losing control by command and control. Yeah, so you, what you want is more empowerment, of course, and, and then avoiding being the bottleneck. And another manager I was working with, he said he was measuring the uh, amount of empowerment in the organization by the queue outside his door. If there was a long queue, people were kind of coming and escalating and asking for, uh, for, for things. And then he knew that uh, empowerment was low. So he kind of uh, had that as a, as a metric for improving empowerment. Talking about empowerment the next principle is actually about autonomy and autonomy here does not mean do whatever you want it's about solving your own problems where they happen so we need to give people big freedom to act and solve everything that is stopping them from actually delivering what is asked for them i'd like to add also normally when we talk about autonomy that it's not really autonomy, it's semi, semi-autonomy because we have dependencies. We uh, are not working in a vacuum. We always have co- uh, collaboration and, in, and interdependencies with others. Yeah, so better make the, the boundaries very clear, the direction very clear and make people be able to act within that and be very transparent so you can see if they have understood uh, the clearance in this or if you have been clear enough, that is. Um, moving on to the next principle, that is about the organization. And it's about what we used to call like one team. The whole organization needs to have the same goals and working in the same direction together, not splitting into different departments where every department have their own goals and, and they sometimes reach those goals by making sure that others are not reaching their goal or not really making sure, but ignoring that the other ones need to reach their goals as well. The last one, uh, the last principle on the leadership part is about the customers. And this is also a well-known theme in this uh, podcast, this idea of zero distance to the customer, uh, that everyone is feeling the customer they need to know the customer they are sitting almost uh, together with the customer in whatever they are doing those were the leadership principles let's move over to the management principles yes so bjart emphasis management uh, principles as well because the management processes and 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 guidelines in organizations they are influencing so much the structure um, is influencing and and kind of directing what's possible and what people can do and so on so some of the management um, principles then he has uh, the first one is target Um, so rather than having detailed or specific uh, detailed targets he focuses on relative goals uh, and also he recommends that you have um, uh, they are yeah, in relative terms. So he often brings up the example of Handelsbanken, uh, who measures their success in comparison to the competitors, not an actual uh, fixed number. Uh, also, he kind of says avoid cascading uh, targets. So I think that's the very old way of thinking of management by objectives that you have uh, top level objectives, you break it down by department by department, and to the teams, which is a very slow process, and often it might not be the best way to do it. So having a more integrated uh, and kind of back breathing uh, process where people 
see how they can work towards the um, in initiatives and the targets is much more effective. And I guess this is helping the idea of the one team. So it's not like you have your target, you have your target and you have your target. It's more like we have this common target and, and we need to be working towards that target together. Yes, yes, absolutely. So we all contribute to the overall goals. Yeah. Okay, next is forecasts. So rather than having like fixed budget and having often a lot of politics, a rigid kind of process for budget, you have a forecast. And that is um, something that can change as well. And avoiding kind of this um, biased political budgeting process. Uh, thirdly is uh, resource allocation and um, he here is also about um, having more dynamic approach rather than having a detailed annual budget allocation. So this is again disconnecting the budget from the resource allocation. Uh, fourth is performance evaluation. So this is not to connect the performance uh, evaluation to rewards uh, only, uh, not connected to salary, for example, but to focus it on uh, interventions and, and uh, learning. Yeah, is, is it the problem when, especially when you connect it to some sort of rewards, uh, that they will be gamed? Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, talking about rewards, that's the fifth uh, uh, principle in Beyond Budgeting. And here it talks about also um, in comparing success against the competition. Uh, so also people can get share, a share of the rewards. And last one is coordination. So uh, the management process needs to be dynamically around business rhythms and events, like connect to the business, not the yearly process. Doesn't make sense to have like a yearly um, budgeting cycle or a yearly annual review, for example, it should be more dynamic based on business needs. Is there a business need for having it yearly? Then it's fine, but otherwise it could be like monthly, quarterly, weekly, whatever is needed. But it's a tendency to have uh, like a clock uh, going and then you have to do the certain processes at different time in the calendar. So not have the calendar drive it, have the business needs drive the processes. That was the principles of management. Yes. Um, yes, so, so I think that that's why he have this high focus on the business uh, uh, management processes, but since they drive so, so much of what's possible in organizations. And if you want to have more of business agility, you need to go to the core of the finance, the economy, and also HR and management processes. So true, so true. Yeah, so that's how you can create business agility according to Bjarteden. I'm still going back to the idea of the budgets and the problems budgets might cause. Uh, for instance, we have seen a couple of really weird, strange, or at least strange behaviors because of budgets. Like, uh, uh, we believe that saying yes to a budget means the same thing as prioritizing. Uh, we should have this, so we put some money on it. Uh, the problem that will cause is that the people working with this, they have a lot of things that is within the budget and they don't know which one to focus on. And that is of course causing a lot of task switching, which is, yeah, making life much harder for the developers and um, then less things will come out. Some other really strange things we have seen is that uh, people stop working because they are out of budgets or at least they're not focusing on the, the most important project. Yes, because that project is yeah, you know, not and, and enough the silly, the silly thing about it is that they still get their salary, but the <laughs> project budget is not approved, but people cannot be without salary and they cannot be fired. So 
the company thinks it's better for them to just sit wait waiting for next year with salary and then they can start working on the project when there's uh, probably, I could hardly believe it, but it was true. This told me. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I have also seen this, uh, and it's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, last thing I can come up with right now is this missing of opportunities. Uh, like we have possibilities to e improve efficiency or effectiveness. Uh, we can jump into new business opportunities. But then someone says, ah, sorry, we don't have enough money in the budget. So you have to wait until next year, which of course is losing the possibilities. Sometimes it's the opposite actually. So in a project at the end, if you have some incremental deliveries, you get diminishing returns. But because the product or project manager still have a budget, they, want, they don't want to let go of the people in, in the project. So they keep uh, polishing and gold plating, adding small things because th there's still budget. But meanwhile, you have a <laughs> more important, more valuable thing to do. Um, but yeah, since there's budget left, you have peop you let the people kind of continue working on it, on the lower value stuff. Yeah, December is a really good b uh, business month because of uh, biz, uh, companies having still budgets to spend. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what the last uh, principle there was about coordination. If uh, it, when you connect it to calendar, not business need. Yeah. Okay, so if you think that this is the right way to go, how do you get started? Yes, so uh, Bjerte has some suggestions there. So the first thing was to disconnect these this three uh, important processes. So disconnect the goals and target setting from the budget or the forecasting and with the resource allocation. So treat them as three separate uh, processes. And once you've done that, now you can start looking into these three processes uh, one by one. So for example, with the, with the targets, uh, are there stretch goals? Are there more open, uh, outcome oriented? Are you using kind of relative uh, targets? Then on, you go to the budget side and kind of shift that to a forecast. So it's a dynamic planning more and get rid of uh, this political and, and, and gaming. So you have more of an unbiased uh, forecast. And, and thirdly then uh, on the resource side. So rather, uh, rather than kind of setting fixed amount of resources, uh, as we talked about having more outcome based approach so uh, more dynamically uh, adjusting the kind of resource needs as well. So those are the suggestions for getting started. Okay, so let's wrap up for today. So we're curious about your reflections and comments, so please share them in, in the comment sections. And if you want to learn more about leading in complexity, we suggest you check out all our earlier episodes so you can find them if you go to um, leadingcomplexity.com slash podcasts uh, or you can also search for leading complexity podcast on youtube or spotify and remember to subscribe uh, thanks so much and see you next week thank you mm -hmm.